Hi, I'm Dana Brown, and today we're going to work through the Zojo iOS tutorial. This will give you an introduction into using Zojo to build a simple task manager application. Before we get started, a quick note. You do need a Mac to make iOS projects with Zojo, and also to run tests and debug them, you need the iOS simulator that can be found with Apple's Xcode development tool. You can get Xcode free from the Mac App Store. You just need to launch it one time to accept the license agreement, and then Zojo will automatically launch the iOS simulator for you in the future. You're looking now at the Zojo Project Chooser. Since we're making an iOS app, select iOS and enter Task Manager as the application name, and then press OK. Zojo opens the workspace with the default view for your app selected in the navigator and displayed in the layout editor. For our task manager app, we'll enter tasks into a text field and then tap add to add them to the table. So to get started, let's design our user interface. First add the button that it's used to add a task to the table. In the library, click the button and drag it to the screen so that it is at the top right just below the navigation bar. Use the alignment guides to position it with the appropriate amount of space between the header line and the right edge of the screen. Now let's grab a text field and drag it onto the screen so that it's at the top left just below the navigation bar. Grab the right handle of the text field and drag it to make the control wider until you reach the button's left alignment guide. In the library, click on the table and drag it to the center of the layout editor below the button and text field. As you drag the table onto the screen, you'll see the alignment indicators as you saw for the other controls and drop the table when you're happy with its position on the screen. And don't forget to grab the bottom handle and drag it downward to make it taller. Stop dragging when the bottom edge is right up against the bottom of the screen. And it's okay if you don't get it right the first time, you can adjust and move your controls as much as you need to till you get it right. Okay, so we've now added all of the controls and your screen should now look like this. Next, we're gonna look at properties. A property is a value of a class. The inspector is used to change screen and control properties. It shares the same area on the right of the workspace as the library. In order to show the inspector, click the inspector button on the toolbar. First, we're gonna change the screen properties. In the layout editor, click anywhere on the background to select the screen rather than a control. The inspector now shows the properties of the screen. In the name field, let's change the name from screen one to task manager screen. In the title field, we'll change the name from untitled to task manager. Press return to see the name change in the navigation bar of the screen. Click the button to select it. The inspector now shows its properties. In the name field, we'll change the name from button one to add button. And in the caption field, change the text from button to add. Click on the text field to select it. And we'll change the name from text field one to task field. In the text field, remove the text untitled and leave the field blank. In the hint field, add enter a task. And to make it easier for the user to type, click the switches next to allow spell checking and allow auto correction properties. Finally, the last control we have left to adjust the properties is the table. Click on the table to select it and change the name from table one to task table. Press return to see the name change in the navigator. This is what your final layout should look like after adjusting all of the properties. Now let's run our app to see what it actually looks like. First, we need to save it. So go ahead and save your project and name the project iOS Task Manager and click Save. To test the app in the simulator, we wanna make sure that we've already launched Xcode once. So if you haven't done that, go ahead and do that now. If you have done that, then you're ready to rock and roll, so click the Run button in the toolbar. When your app appears in the iOS simulator, you can interact with the buttons by clicking on them, or you can type in the text field. But remember, it doesn't do anything yet, so when you're finished, switch back to Zojo and click the Stop button. 
If you want to change the type of iOS device that the simulator runs your project in, go to the navigator and click on iOS under the build settings. In the inspector, change the value for the simulator pro device property to another available iOS device on the list. Okay, now it's time to add some code. So here comes the fun part of this tutorial. Let's uh, first start with the button. So we're going to create the array to store the tasks. Choose property from the insert menu. A new property is added to the task manager screen. Enter the name as shown and in the inspector, enter pair for the type. In the navigator, click on the Add button to select it. And in the Layout Editor, double click the Add button. The Add Event Handler dialog appears and the pressed event will already, already be selected, so just click OK to add it. You're now in the Code Editor editing the Add button's pressed event. When the user presses the button, the button should add a row to the Tasks array using the text the user entered in the task field, store false to indicate that the task is not yet completed, and clear the contents of the task field so they can enter another task. This is the code you'll enter to make that happen. To save yourself from having to do a lot of extra typing, remember that when you see an ellipsis in the code editor, pressing the tab on the keyboard will auto-complete the item for you. Now back to the navigator and click on the task manager screen to select it. From the insert menu at the top, choose event handler. The add event handler dialog appears and since task manager screen is selected, the events of that appear for it. The opening event is selected by default, so go ahead and press OK to add it. Enter the following code to make the task manager screen the task table's data source. Now we're going to add some methods that will connect the tasks array to the task table's data source. In the navigator, click on the task manager screen to select it. In the inspector, click on the choose button next to interface. The interfaces dialog box appears. Click on the checkbox next to iOS mobile table data source. It's the fifth option from the top and click OK. In the navigator, click on the row count method. When the task table needs to know how many rows there are in the array, it will call this method. The line of text that appears is a comment. Click at the end of it and press the return key to create a new line and enter this code. In the navigator, Click on row data method to select it. It too has a comment, so click at the end of that comment and press the return key to create a new line. Enter the following three lines of code. The first line creates a new variable titled cell of type mobile table cell data. A cell in a table will, will hold one task. The second uses the table variable that was passed from the task table to the row data method. Next, use the left property of the pair to get the name of the task, which is ultimately what will be passed to the create cell method, so it can create a cell with that task in it. Finally, we'll use the return command to return to the cell you created to the task table. In the navigator, click on the section count method. Click to the right of the comment and press the return key to create a new line and entering the following code. It's time to save our project again and we can click the run button in the main toolbar to see what our app looks like now. Type a task in the task field and press the add button to add it to the table. When you're done, return to Sojo and press the stop button you used last time. You wouldn't want the user to accidentally add a blank task, and so to avoid this, you'll need to disable the Add button and then enable it once the user has entered text in the task field. 
In the Navigator, click on the Task Manager screen to select it. Click on the Add button in the layout. In the Inspector, turn off the Add Button's Enabled property, and notice the button now appears disabled. In the Layout Editor, double-click the Task field and add the Text Changed Event Handler. Add the following code to the Text Changed Event. The code checks the text property of the task field to see if it's blank. Me, in this case, refers to the task field since this event is part of that control. If the text property is blank, the Add Buttons Enabled property is set to false. If it's not blank, it's set to true. Since the Add button clears the task field, you need to add a line of code to its pressed event to disable it after the user presses it. In the Navigator, click on the Task Manager screen to select it. In the Layout Editor, double-click on the Add button to go to its pressed event handler. In the pressed event, add the following line of code to disable the Add button. For the last step, we need to make it possible for the user to swipe left and mark a task as complete or incomplete and delete if they wish. So let's do it. We will go back to the navigator and click the task manager screen. In the inspector, click the choose button next to interfaces. In the interfaces dialog box, click on the checkbox for iOS mobile table data source editing. Click OK to add the interface to the Task Manager screen. Finally, add the following code. Returning true in this method tells the task table that the user can edit rows. Click on the Task Manager screen to select it. Double click on the task table in the Layout Editor to add an event. In the Add Event dialog box, choose the Apply Actions for Row event handler and click OK. Add the following code to the event. So what's going on in this code? Well, the first line creates an array. The size is one, which creates two items because array numbering begins at zero rather than one. The type of each item in this array is iOS mobile table row action. This is an object that represents an action the user can take on a row such as pressing a button. The second line passes the row parameter, which you can see at the top of the code editor was passed into this event, which holds the row number upon which the user tapped. That gets passed into the tasks array to get the selected task. Then you can check the right property of the pair. If it's true, that means that the task is marked as completed, so you want to add the incomplete button on line 3, allowing the user to remove the check mark. If it's false, the task is incomplete, so you go to line 5, and add the completed button so the user can tap that to mark it completed. The next line adds the delete button and finally return the actions array to the task table so it can add them to the row the user swiped left on. Each of these buttons are created using the iOS mobile table row action class. With it, you indicate the style of the button Normal provides a gray background, while Destructive provides a red one to remind the user that this action will result in data loss. You also pass in the label you want on the button and the action tag you want passed when the user taps the button so you know which action they wish to take. You may be wondering why you need both a button name and action tag when they are the same. Your app might one day be localized into another language, for example, in which case the button name would be localized because it's seen by the user, but the action tag would not because it's only your code that uses that. So let's see how our app's looking. Go ahead and save it and then press the Run button so we can see what our app looks like now in the iOS simulator. Enter a task on the task list and try swiping left to see if you 
get the right buttons and make sure they work properly. Okay, let's go back to Zojo because there's a few more things we need to do to get this app working properly. In the navigator, click on the task table to select it. From the insert menu, choose event handler. The add event handler dialog box appears and you can select row action selected event. Press OK to add the event to the task table. Add the following code. When this event is called, the action tag of the action the user chose will be passed in via the action tag parameter. This code uses a select case statement to deal with each possibility. If the user tapped the delete button, remove row add, yet another built-in array method in Zojo, is called and passed the row number the user tapped on so that it can delete the row from the tasks array. Then reload data source is called to cause the task table to update itself with the data from the tasks array. Reload data source is a built-in method of the table control. If the user tapped the completed button, the current row of the tasks array is replaced with the task name it already has and the value true to indicate the task was completed. Reload row, which is another built-in method of the table control, is called to tell the task table to update that row from the tasks array. If the user tapped on the incomplete button, the exact same thing happens as what happened when they clicked the completed button, with the important difference that the value set for the task is false instead of true. In these last two cases, because reload row is called, the row data method will be called to provide the row data to the task table. That means you have one thing left to do. Make the check mark appear or disappear when the task is completed or marked incomplete. In the navigator, click on the row data method to select it. You may need to expand the methods list to see it. In the code editor, click at the end of the line that calls create cell and press the return key to create an empty line between that line and the return cell line. Insert the following lines of code between those lines. As you've already guessed, row is passed to this event from the table and is the row the user tapped on. If the right value of the task pair is true, the cell's accessory type, which is one of several widgets that can appear on the right side of a row, will be set to a check mark. If it's false, it will be set to nothing. Believe it or not, that's it. Your app is done. Run it in the iOS simulator again and try it out. Thanks for watching our video. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you're notified of new videos.